uh, agenda item is uh, very important legislation, which is now in the State House to uh, change uh, liquor laws, uh, both in the state and I believe in the city. Um, and uh, there's actually two bills, as far as I know. Uh, uh, Jesse here, who represents uh, Council of Ayanna Presley, uh, the Home Rule Petition, which got to the legislature, went to a joint committee, and apparently is still in that committee. And uh, in the meanwhile, there's been uh, an attachment to a uh, economic development bill, I believe, in the legislature. Um, with similar uh, conditions, but uh, maybe some slight changes. And so maybe Aaron can update us on what's happening with that bill. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Um, yeah, so not much has changed since I last came and talked to you about it last month. Um, there's kind of two tracks going here in terms of legislation that's being talked about. One is talking about strictly uh, four o'clock licenses and the option for municipalities to have four o'clock licenses. Uh, Boston being included in, in that option in, is one of those options, and then the other is uh, additional liquor licenses being um, being added to Boston and allowing Boston to have the option of getting more uh, liquor licenses. Also, actually, a third separate train is uh, having Boston uh, take over from the state their ability to uh, run the board, basically the licensing board. Right now, the state runs the licensing board; the governor makes the appointments. Uh, that sit on the, the three appointments that sit on the licensing board. There's also a, a proposal out there to turn that over to the city that's been talked about for years, uh, and that's picked up a lot of uh, steam over the last uh, six months. Um, I'll start with the four o'clock licenses. Uh, there was a budget proposal that was put in last uh, last May uh, into the into the budget from the Senate side, and um, was in the conference committee. Report, uh, debated in the conference committee report uh, that did not make it out of the um, out of the conference committee report, and when we voted on the budget, that 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 initiative died there. Uh, what the initiative was was allowing municipalities that lived along the MBTA that were receiving uh, that were that received late night service from the MBTA, the extended hours of the MBTA that just started at the beginning of the year. Uh, so that didn't just include Boston; it included Cambridge, Somerville. Uh, um, Newton, Brookline, Quincy, Braintree, uh, Revere, uh, as the blue line goes out to Revere. Uh, so all those cities had the option of a, of a four o'clock license. That did not make it through the, uh, the budget, uh, but it did resurface within the economic development bill uh, process that's been going on. The House passed an economic development bill. The Senate passed an economic development bill. We're conferencing. There is discussion about four o'clock licenses in that, in that debate. Uh, Currently, as pri previously with the budget, uh, uh, there's many of, of the Boston House Democrats that are that are opposed to this issue, uh, including myself. Uh, we we have a lot of concerns surrounding four o'clock licenses and what that means for the neighborhoods that we represent. Uh, I can speak for myself. I, I don't only just represent the North End. Obviously, it's where I'm from, but I don't only just just represent the North End. I represent a lot of downtown Boston, where these where, where these licenses might be potentially placed. And so I have personally a, a large amount of concerns and questions in terms of how this is going to be implemented, what, you know, where would it be, and how would we go about it. Uh, so that hasn't, I, my, my concerns haven't been resolved as, as of many of my, my colleagues in the House from the Boston side, and so that has not been um, something, as we go forward into the economic development discussion, uh, the economic development bill discussion, those concerns still remain. And uh, it will be something that I'll, we'll be watching as we get closer to the end of July, which our formal session ends July 31st uh, for the current year. Uh, the, the second piece is about the additional liquor licenses. Um, as Jim was stating, um, Council Parsi and a number, a number of councilors uh, passed a home rule petition that came up to the House uh, to uh, grant uh, uh, added licenses um, to the city of Boston. And there's been a discussion of exactly how many and where would they go. and how would that proceed? Uh, that also is being discussed in the Economic Development Bill as well. Um, there is a lot of numbers being floated about, whether there is a hundred and, uh, right now there is a discussion about 150 licenses that will be added over three years. Uh, and some of those would be restricted, some of those would be unrestricted. Uh, when I say restricted, meaning they're, they're forced to be placed in the neighborhoods that they originally sit in. Uh, we did a bill similar to this uh, uh, in 2007, uh, I think, and uh, Billy, I think you know the yeah. history of that better than I, but uh, <laughs> uh, in 2007 where the licenses were restricted. 
Uh, and there was a map drawn up by the BRA and they were supposed to go in specific neighborhoods. I know in my district, for instance, the Weather District was looking for more licenses. They were looking to grow as a, as a community and, and they, they were able to get some licenses at that point in time and they asked, you know, if anybody's been down to the Weather District in the last five years, there's been a lot more activity, a lot more people living there and a lot more um, uh, uh, business uh, development over there. So, uh, but there's an ongoing discussion exactly what that number is going to be and Again, what, how much is going to be restricted and unrestricted. Uh, my biggest concern coming from uh, my district has been um, additional liquor licenses is something that I think a lot of people are concerned about. Uh, and so uh, I, I want to see it as restricted as possible and to keep it as uh, out of downtown as much as possible. I know, including Council Press, I know many of my colleagues in government have argued that certain neighborhoods should have more, and I, I completely understand and agree that. I think Dudley Square can be revitalized with some with some further activity. I think um, Mattapan Square needs some. Uh, I know Council Lamartina has advocated for some more in Charlestown and East Boston, uh, but for my district in particular, I don't think I need make that many more licenses. Uh, to be fair, from last year, we have a lot. We have a ton in this neighborhood, obviously, and, and obviously downtown has plenty. Uh, so I, I'm advocating for as, as, uh, as much restriction on those licenses as possible, because traditionally and historically, wherever licenses go, as time goes on, the market usually drives them to downtown. Uh, that's why I mean, that's where most of the people that don't live in the city are coming to the city. Um, and so, because of the, because of the financial district, the, you know, the business community, uh, and and I would like to. I mean, I think we have, we have a very prosperous situation that goes on in downtown, and I would like to see other neighborhoods <laughs> prosperous as much, if not more. Um, lastly, on the turning the. The, the last part about turning it over to uh, back over to the city of Boston from uh, the control of the board from the state to the city. Uh, I don't think you're seeing too much opposition on that. Uh, that is something that out of, the, out of the three things that we're talking here, I can, I'm going to give a prediction and say that it's probably the wrong thing to do, but I'm going to give a prediction and say that's probably the most likely of, of scenarios taking place in terms of uh, having, the, having the board turn back over to the city. Uh, I think that it's been uh, something that Mayor Walsh has, has been fighting for, and I know the former Mayor Menino was fighting for as well, uh, and I think that where there's enough uh, political will right now to try to move it in that direction. Anything can happen, it's, you know, it's politics, and you know, you know, we'll see what happens as we get down to the end of July 31st, but as of right now, I think that's the, uh, that's the, the most recent update, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions, or counsel, do you want to? No, we're still on the side. Okay. 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 Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it on. Okay. Dave Kubiak, Cleveland Place. Uh, there's another issue that hasn't been discussed in the various permutations of these bills, and that is whether the licenses should be transferable or not. In 2007, I believe it, we added, the state legislature added 55 licenses within the city, some all alcohol, some beer and wine. I believe all 55 of those licenses, though, were designated non-transferable. And I would hope that if we could get to the point eventually of having all licenses non-transferable. Now, by that, I don't mean making a license that someone has already paid daily for non-transferable. They should be able to recoup their costs. But licenses do go back to the city from time to time. We know that because we know that certain establishments in our neighborhood have received what we call new licenses, which really are licenses issued directly by the city, not a license that's bought from someone else. When, and I, I hope that as part of all of this, any license that returns to the municipality automatically becomes non-transferable. Because it, at least in this city, those licenses are free. You pay a fee for the application. You pay an annual fee to the city for holding the license. But you don't pay for the license itself. It is free. So you're getting a free license that immediately you're able to sell. I'm not saying you, you can't sell immediately, but it's immediately worth anywhere from $30,000 to $200,000. And that needs to change. Yeah, no, when I, when I said, maybe I should use the different terms, I was saying restricted versus unrestricted, I really was meaning transferable versus non-transferable. Okay, it seemed like you yeah, had I, I in terms of the neighborhoods where yeah. they would be issued. Well, I mean, I mean it, it's, it, yeah. 
in 2007, I mean, I, 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 I like the bill that we did in 2007. I think that, you know, we like to we try to model it as much as possible, as much as we can get to model it off of 2007, because I think there is, um, Again, like if, you, if we, we want communities to prosper, let's focus on those communities because and, and, and let's not make it easy for you know licenses to end up in the places that they, they that we don't want them to be or the neighborhoods we don't want them to be. Yeah, I just want to just say that I agree with Adam because there are neighborhoods in the city that really need the licenses. There's a restaurants in the city in my neighborhoods in East Boston and, and Child South that they can't survive without a beer and wine license. And finally, the city of Boston should control uh, the, the liquor license board. And it's sad that every time we want licenses, that we have to go begging, sorry, to the state. And there was one time we went up there with one legislature uh, held, held it his committee because he was having a little issue with our mayor Menino at the time. So I think uh, it makes sense, and I'm hoping that Aaron will um, help us pass couple of these bills. <laughs> so that's where we are with that. And uh, I want to commend Ayanna Presley um, for uh, passing that resolution to the city council and uh, sponsoring that resolution. It's important for all our, our neighbors in the city. It might not be important over here because we have so many of them, but there are so many other neighborhoods that need their white licenses. East Boston one of them? East Boston is one of them. There's a lot of restaurants, particularly the Latino restaurants that open up. They look for beer and wine licenses. And a new restaurant on, uh, on Summer Street, a kitchen that wants to do brunch and open up. And he pulled this early because people won't go in there because there's not a beer and wine license. Yeah, with or something? Across the street. So that's where we are now. I have a question about the 4 a.m. Yeah. business. Um, how likely is that to go through? And what can we do to stop them? Oh, so, I mean, I, first of all, I think it has to pass at the state house for it. Right. But uh, I know that the mayor has a task force that's looking at that, at the four o'clock licenses. Um, I have mixed feelings on four o'clock licenses. I, I'm really concerned about four o'clock licenses in the neighborhoods, but I don't have a problem with four o'clock licenses at hotels in downtown Boston. You know, there's an issue with the police, and I hear it all the time. At 2 o'clock, all the bars and clubs have to go. And that's why we, we lose all the, our police officers in the neighborhood, because they're responding to fights and problems. Canyon Hall, Lansdowne Street, and, and uh, everywhere, Boston, Boston. So, so I don't know if it helps if people stagger at different times, leaving bars. Um, but something that the task force has to look at. But I've been hearing that for years from uh, uh, from the police. Jason, do you have a question? No, I wanted Aaron to yeah. ask a question. Well, I mean, I, I have strong concerns about 4 a.m. licenses, um, generally anywhere in my district, because, because it's, again, there are people that do support it, and my, and that, you know, some of the, even in this neighborhood, because I've gotten some calls on from different parts of my district and, and some people from this neighborhood that do support 4 a.m. licenses. Uh, so this isn't a 100 percent, you know, cut and dry kind of situation. But uh, you know, my, my district and my constituency has overwhelmingly told me, well before this issue came up, that licenses, late night licenses, are an issue and something that uh, needs to be solved. And um, you know, moving it to four o'clock is something that I, I, I have I've had strong concerns about. Previously, and I can continue that strong. If the city gets control of the licensing board, who, uh, who has the appointing authority? Is it solely the mayor? Or is it city? Or is it the city, city council? City council. So, Councilor Preston will um, uh, outline the process. It would be the mayor would have the authority to appoint the members, but the council would have authority to uh, approve those. So like a sudden, like a confirmation? Confirmation. Yeah. Also oh, the council, okay. So, so it's just not, so it's not the mayor controlling the board. Right, to appoint them. And, and I would say that, I would say that, 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 that discussion is also fluid. Right. I think that how exactly that, that, that gets resolved is, isn't, isn't cut and dry yet. It's well, I think, I, I think the council, because I think the staff, the test is himself, I think they are held to a, 
to a degree for what goes on at these establishments and these licenses, so I think we should have a role. Yeah. So when we call and yell at you, at least you'll be responsible. <laughs> no, anyway. Yeah, Mary's got a question. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you about the So a bunch of the residents, uh, association, neighborhood council people, uh, were, were fortunate enough to meet with Diana Presley, and she poignantly talked about her vision for the, the home rule petition, her, her bill, and, and, and why she wanted to do it. A lot of it had to do with getting those liquor licenses in the right places. Uh, and I asked sort of the na naive question, well, why can't you have really targeted, like, we're going to give five licenses to this neighborhood and ten licenses to, to that? And she said, you can't do that. There would have to be a separate bill for every neighborhood if you were to do something that, um, that precision, sh you know, rifle shot um, uh, uh, focused uh, uh, of, of the licenses. Is that, I mean, is, is that the way the legislature works, really? Or? No, I mean I'm not sure. I mean I, I mean because I, I wasn't there for the conversation, yeah, no, the yeah. discussion. I, 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 I don't want to be. I don't want to say that council press was wrong or whatnot. Um, I it, it, the way we did it in again the way we did it in 2007 when we added licenses was we created we created zones. They were called like empowerment zones or I, I forget the exact Main Street zones and things like that. And and they were very specific in terms of even like streets and we are like certain streets certain for instance Beacon Hill. Uh, like one side of Charles Street was an empowerment zone, and the other side of Charles Street was not an empowerment zone. Or something, you know, it was very specific in exactly where the licenses could go. Um, that I do not do not know off the top of my head, or do not believe that is something that could be done by this by by the city council. I mean, I think that that is something that the legislature uh, would have to designate because the BRA's creation, the, the creation of the BRA. Is, was through the don't blame don't blame me. The right. mission of the BRA was through the legislature. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so therefore, I think it's I think it's uh, again I'm 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 not 100 percent sure about that, and I can get back to you on that exactly. But I believe that's kind of why it had to be done uh, through the state legislature in terms of in terms of creating those zones. I don't think the city council themselves could actually sign off on the zones. Well, that bill had to be yeah, for actually, multiple, yeah. that bill had to be for multiple cities. Yeah, state legislature. Right. Can't do a special vote for just for one. It, it, it just seemed it seemed strange as, as I was hearing the argument, and I understood that there were a lot of constraints in the system. And and again, um, Councillor Presley was quite uh, you know articulate and 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 uh, uh, passionate about saying we, we need to, to solve some of these problems. And so I think everyone who was listening was quite supportive. But but you know to to be able to get some licenses in some places by creating a flood of a 10% supply increase in, in licenses, having the, the uh, almost half of those licenses be totally unrestricted, and then half the licenses be restricted in some amorphous fashion that we weren't sure, and I think a lot of people aren't sure is legally defensible, was just, it, it's sort of like if a fire broke out in the North End and the fire department said, let's flood the North End and we'll be sure to put the fire out. So, you know, it probably would work, but it's probably not the best way to put a fire out. It just seemed it seemed really a, a shotgun approach to solving the uh, development problem. That leads to my second question, which is, has anyone, and I don't mean this to sound um, you know, um, sarcastic, but has anyone thought about 
really looking at what's wrong with the entire liquor licensing pr process. I mean, getting a lot of folks who look over the process involved in like, you know, how people cheat the system, how the system is gamed, the goofy uh, cordial situation where we're regulating uh, liquor with sugar content differently than liquor without sugar content. I mean, there's all this, these artifacts from the past, and what you're left with is a system where if you want to to say you're opening a restaurant, but then you end up operating a bar, it's really easy because there's really no legal distinction distinction when you come right down to it between a restaurant and a bar or a tavern. So it, has there been any thought about actually doing sort of a, an analysis of the issues and then creating legislation to actually target that as opposed to what I heard when I heard a little bit about how the sausage was being made is pieces of the 2000 legislation were, were being copied into the new legislation and actually some people, did, you know, it didn't seem like everyone knew what was in the legislation. I, mean, I, I, I would say it's, very, it's a very fair point and um, uh, not something that some of us haven't thought about, especially since this has come full head now in terms of you know, the last month or two, uh, because uh, there is a, a lot of, a lot of piecemealing right now in terms of how we move forward and figure it out. So I mean, it's, it's a very fair point. It's something that I will certainly personally look at myself going forward. Well, I think there are neighborhood associations, not just Nura. I know Nunit, um, Back Bay, Beacon Hill. A lot every of folks, yeah. every neighborhood every would every love neighborhood. to lean in and help. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's a lot of information there as to what's right and what's wrong in the system. So if the legislature wants help, there's a whole community of folks. I would also just say on, on your first on your first question, just a, just a point. Um, if there is more licenses added, which I mean is a possibility before the end of the session, you know, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I don't want to be naive about it. Uh, that is a po there is a possibility that, that that there could be more licenses added. It, it's still going to have to go through at the end of the day, the firewalls of the people and groups, you know, licensing board. And while sometimes we haven't been all the, the happiest about how some of those outcomes have been, um, there is still that. You know that catch that catch basin kind of before before it's all said and done. Yeah. And I think a concern here is when, whenever there's a flood of licenses, you know whatever the decision, like oh we we'd like some of them to, there will be a giant sucking sound of the Seaport District and the North End sucking the majority of the licenses out, because there are certain places where you're just going to make a lot more money running a restaurant, and there are probably some other neighborhoods too, and there are other places where the licenses are not going to go. So the, 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 focus, um, the focus method in the, the bill, uh, we really think needs to be a bit more precise. And again, we're happy to help. Thank you. I also think one thing that's important to keep in mind is regulation on the back end of everything. The fact of the matter is right now, and any type of alcohol license is currently classified as an asset, which is a lot different than it being classified as a permit. And what usually happens at the very least, or maybe even at most, is when there's any type of violation, the liquor license holder, no matter what type of alcohol or liquor license it is, <coughs> gets a slap on the wrist, a one, a two, a three, or even a seven day suspension of the license. So they're losing X amount of dollars, that's fine, they, they eat it up, they eat up the loss, and then they move forward and they continue to make their money. I think if we change the classification then we can hold the liquor license holder a lot more accountable. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think if the liquor license holder is convicted of a felony, no matter what type of felony it is, then I think you're looking at definite or possible revocation of the license. So I think that's a huge distinction. The, the license, no matter what type it is, being classified as an asset versus a permit. And obviously, if you're a permit holder of some sort, there seems to be more of a, of a framework or a policy, a procedure in place as to punishment and fines. I know. I think. I think if the city controls the board, and then guess what? The viewers have a You know what I mean? So I think that's the point. I mean, I have seen licenses being rolled back, hours being rolled back as punishment. Um, at least Boston, we have done it once or twice. It hasn't happened here, but we have done it once or twice over there. But that's why I think the board should belong to the city. I think this way the mayor is accountable for it. And right now, as you, we could go up there and I can tell you, members of that board, and I'm not going to mention names, who say, listen, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do whatever I want. And that's what's happening.
speaking of that board, are they, because I know some people have been renewed for six years recently, are they going to honor that in the new, or is that something that's still up in the air? Again, that's part of the uh, the ongoing discussion, I guess, it's okay in terms of, work of how that moves forward. Uh, that has been brought up. Just an observation. We've had the police, uh, Boston police comment present before. We've had a series of votes, both Nura and Nunick, on uh, late night closings here in the North End. And on all those occasions, the police, this is part of, they, they treat it as a public health issue and a safety issue. They are all telling us what it's like to greet people leaving these establishments, whether it's at 1.30 in the morning or 2.30 in the morning. Uh, and it's scary. And we know that they're telling us basically, in so many words, this, this, is, this is endangering and it doesn't add to the quality of life in the community. And I want to remind us that we've had many votes from both of our local boards where the police will present and then the vote will be taken and the police are not being listened to as part of this, this dialogue. I work in the city of Lynn where they actually had a rollback from two in the morning to one because the police came forward and gave statistics having to do with violent crimes in Lynn and they actually had a rollback because Lynn was becoming a magnet for late night drunks because Revere was doing rollback as well. So we're part of the problem because if we're not consistent in the way we review the proposals we're not listening to our law enforcement officials and they're not part of this discussion and just this morning it had nothing to do with with this issue I learned that uh, in the past two to three years we've lost about a hundred and sixty available officers in our local uh, district here who are able to provide coverage. So it's something to think about if the city is going to use as part of its economic engine this four in the morning closing and we're not having police presence and the police are telling us even if you give us double up we're going to have more violent crime. So I, that's my observation. A couple of things. First, thanks for the position you've taken on the four o'clock lessons. It's had my voice to the others. Uh, secondly, uh, I hope that you can do whatever you can do to prevent uh, final votes being taken before July 31st, because I have lots of suggestions to make, which I would like to make uh, for the next term. For example, I would like to suggest that uh, the licensing board, before it, uh, or when it decides to issue a number of new licenses, if they don't issue them all at once, they'll say they issue uh, 35, uh, that they designate where they propose to issue them and then that the legislation require a public hearing in the neighborhoods where they propose to issue them. That's one suggestion. I have several more. Um, <clears throat> and I'd like to point out that even leaving the existing legislation in place, there is something that is not being observed. The existing uh, law has for years and years said the transfer of existing licenses shall be subject to a public hearing in the neighborhood in which the license is to be relocated, properly advertised, and at an appropriate time to afford the neighborhood an opportunity to be present. Uh, so far as I'm aware, the licensing board has never had a public hearing in the neighborhood. Therefore, if that provision is being honored, it is being honored by yes. NURA and NUNIC. Uh, I would like to see something specific which says that the licensing board shall hold the hearing in the neighborhood, and so on and so on. So please, if you can, hold it off. I'll be glad to contribute some time. We have a time problem in that uh, we're keeping someone over time, but we haven't heard from this gentleman. One more question. I have a question for a comment more on the street. When the time came out that uh, the mayor says that we would like to extend the hours at the Seaport area of the liquor license. Oh, that would mean that that doesn't include the North End. Should that ever happen, that it goes through, how long will it be before some of these residents here in the North End go to court? Because they're discriminating 
that you're going to put it down there, but we can't open it up till 4 o'clock. We've been here a long time, way before you built up the seaport. So now, you're going to be faced with the possibility of going to court. They will include the not then, and if that happens, it's going to start going to other areas also. I mean, you, so they better think about it very closely. It's, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't. I'm not going to touch the going to court part, but the you make a good point in terms of just once you open mm -hmm. the Pandora's box, right. you can't put it back in. And then, and then I think that is really what a lot of my colleagues in the house have been concerned about is that you know we don't know where this would go. We don't know what you know how this is going to be played out. Uh, and and it, and. Um, you know, I mean, just because just because you tell me that it's not going to be in the north end per se, uh, if you told me that, you know, it doesn't mean that at Faneuil Hall it's not going to have a, a four o'clock license at Faneuil Hall is not going to have dramatic effects on, on on our quality of life in this neighborhood, or a four o'clock license at North Station is going to have dramatic effects on our quality of life in this neighborhood. So it's, I mean, it, we're, I mean, we're trying to look at it from from you know from as big of pictures as possible, uh, because there are positive economic opportunities. That could come from, you know, from four o'clock licenses, but there's also quality of life concerns, and and is there a way to balance that? I haven't found that yet, um, so I'm, you know that's why I haven't signed off on it. Uh, but you know, we're trying to find that and see if it is possible. If not, then you know, we won't pass it. Then, you know, four o'clock licenses won't pass. It. Okay, thank you, gentlemen, for being here, and uh, we'll keep our eyes open.